thanks for waiting for me. <laughs> Online and here in the sanctuary, welcome to worship with the people of Trinity Reformed Church. We are a community God gathers, transforms, and sends to share Christ's expansive love with the world. If you're new to Trinity, we invite you to fill out a welcome card at the Welcome Center or scan the QR code in your order of worship. Either way, you can share your email information and find out what's happening throughout the week at Trinity. A few announcements this morning. The first is a thank you to Kayla, Ben, Isla, and Ian Caterberg for hosting our annual pumpkin carving, potluck eating, costume wearing extravaganza yesterday. Uh, friendly people, tasty food, and gross pumpkin innards came together to create good times for all. Today, uh, adult second hour is downstairs after worship and coffee time, and it will be a discussion of Trinity's fall book, Rooted. If you've read part of it, all of it, or none of it, you are welcome to take part in that second hour discussion. My favorite part of the last adult second hour we had was hearing the practices, questions, and thoughts of the people of Trinity. And there'll be more of that today. So know that your voice is welcome and that if you go, I trust you will receive much from the experience too. This year, we'll be celebrating All Saints Sunday on November 5, which is two Sundays from now. During that service, we light a candle for each person uh, we have lost through this year. And we light a candle in honor of each person who was born among us this year. Uh, to make sure the name of your loved one is included in the liturgy, please email trcoffice at trinityreformchurch.org with the name of your loved one by Tuesday, October 31st, so by Halloween. This is the last Sunday I can guarantee an opportunity to sign uh, Together West Michigan's Ready by Five millage support forms out here in the gathering area. It might happen again next Sunday, but I can't guarantee that. We're hoping to get about 40 more forms filled out from Trinity. So if you are willing, and if you haven't done it already, uh, please be sure to fill out a form in the gathering area after worship today. It is best if you live in Kent County. Yes, good qualification. Now let's center ourselves for worship by singing number 496 in our red hymnals, Come All You People. Uya i mose tina mate mare Uya i mose tina mate mare Uya i mose tina mate mare Uya i mose Come all you people come all you people come praise your maker come all you people come praise your maker come all you people come praise your maker come now and worship the lord come all you people come and praise the savior come all you people come and praise the savior come all you people come and praise the savior come now and worship the lord come all you people come and praise the spirit come all you people come and praise the spirit come all you people come and praise the spirit come now and worship the I invite you to rise in body or spirit as God calls us to worship. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless God's name. 
tell of God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations, the Lord's marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let's sing a new song to our God, number one in our green hymnals. you to be seated. In love, God has not destined creation for destruction, but for redemption. Trusting in the steadfast love of God, let's confess our sins together. God of love, we confess that we do not live as those worthy to be entrusted to share your good news. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have failed to till and keep the earth you have made. Forgive us, O God, Cleanse our hearts and minds of all that prevents us from loving you, loving our neighbor, and loving your creation. May our lives be marked by faith, made active in love, as we watch and wait for your coming. Amen. Hear this good news. In Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ, we are loved with the delight of a nursing mother who cherishes her beloved child. We are the body of Christ, called to love one another as the children of God. Having been forgiven in Christ, may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share a sign of that peace with one another.
and who cannot leave. Invite the children to come forward for our prayer together. I think, I think that's of all of us. All right, friends, are we ready to pray together? Let's pray. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God All right, if you are going upstairs to worship in the worship center, you can follow Miss Amanda. And if you are remaining here in the sanctuary to worship, you can turn in your order of worship to our song of preparation, Faith, Hope, and Love. Since this is a new song, uh, listen to the musicians go through it one time, and then we'll bring you in uh, to sing it a couple more times. Our first scripture reading today um, is from Psalm 96, page, uh, which is page 479 in your pew Bibles. Let's listen now to the word of God. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the Lord's name. Tell of the Lord's salvation from day to day. Declare the Lord's glory among the nations, the Lord's marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. The Lord is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before God. Strength and beauty are in God's sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. 
Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due the Lord's name. Bring an offering and come into the Lord's courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. This is the word of God. Our second scripture reading for today comes from 1 Thessalonians. Uh, We'll read chapter 1, verse 1 through 10, and you can find that on page 959 in your pew Bibles. Let's listen now again to the word of God. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness fastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, siblings, beloved by God, that God has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, For in spite of persecution, you receive the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak of it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for God's Son from heaven, from whom God raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of God. When I was a teenager, I loved Christian apologetics, essentially writing that is a defense of the Christian religion, logical reasoning of the validity of faith. I loved the certainty that apologetics conveyed. I loved the logic that apologetics communicated. One time, I naively brought C.S. Lewis apologetic mere Christianity on a plane and read it on an hours-long flight. Needless to say, I invited some stares from passengers at the title I was reading and grumpy remarks about Christianity from my neighbor on the plane. I was undeterred, though. In some ways, my confidence in my faith had never been more sure. In other ways, Apologetics were a way for me to calm my fears and doubts about the faith I was committing to. Questions would surface and I'd read on, worried that certain doubts might disqualify me from leading worship, studying the Bible with others, and praying authentically to God. I'd like you to think back to the early days of your faith. Were you excited, scared, passionate? Did you embrace mystery or cling to certainty? Maybe you were a kid or teenager. Maybe you are a kid or teenager right now. Maybe you were baptized as a baby or came to faith as an adult. Maybe you are in your early years of faith right now. Some people claim the gift of faith at summer camp or during Sunday school or during a, at a campus ministry. For others, family has been a primary place of Christian formation. One thing I know is this. You are very unlikely to have received the gift of faith alone. 
Faith doesn't usually form initially in isolation or solitude. My hunch is that you had at least one mentor, teacher, parent, or pastor, somebody or somebodies to mold and shape your love of God. For the Thessalonians, this person was Paul. Paul came to them from Philippi where he had just been jailed And the people of Thessalonica were like a breath of fresh air in their warm welcome of him and his gospel message. After mentoring the new Christians of Thessalonica, Paul headed to Corinth, where he most likely wrote the letter we now call 1 Thessalonians. Now, one thing to note about Paul that I learned is that he actually didn't love to write letters. Um... He much preferred face-to-face interaction. He was a pastor through and through. So there had to be a strong reason for him to pick up his pen and communicate what was important enough to write down. Biblical scholar Najay Gupta says that for the Thessalonians, Paul knew that these folks were experiencing persecution, and he wanted to provide a message of hope. The church of Thessalonica that Paul was writing to was a baby church. It was only a few months old. Scholars note that those Thessalonians who heard Paul preach almost instantaneously became Christians, and they were excited. They talked about the gospel, and word spread across the land. This was early faith at its finest. Paul said the word came to them with power and conviction, He said that even at a young age, the church exhibited the qualities of faith, hope, and love. But it wasn't all easy. Paul mentions that the Christians turned from idols towards the one true living God. I read some context on this, and I learned that idols were a part of the fabric of the very fabric of public and private life during that time. They were everywhere, and before anything, from a business meeting to a wedding to a long road trip, idols were visited first to ask for a blessing. It was like the phone key wallet check. Did we pray to our idols? We're ready to go. These practices were so commonplace, so normal, That to stop and instead worship one invisible God seemed crazy, and these Christians got crap for it. And it was much worse than my experience on the airplane. This was persecution and rejection from their own communities, and it hurt. Churches can often be found most alive in places where it hurts. There are many documented benefits of prison or ministries in prisons, whether seminary programs, Bible studies, or churches, in ways both predictable and unpredictable, participants in such ministries often turn from the dominant prison cultures of violence, verbal abuse, and acts of despair like suicide. New faith sparks renewed life. Purpose becomes a protective factor against pain. If idols mean cultural norms, then the idols of violence and harm in prisons are used less by incarcerated folks as they pursue God and Christian community. This is miracle enough given the despair and corruption of our justice systems and jails. I learned about this through a theologian named Angela Gorell. After taking a job to study the theology of joy, Yale theologian Angela Gorell lost her cousin to suicide and her father to opioid addiction. She found herself in the throes of grief at the exact moment when she was supposed to understand and and teach the theology of joy. She tried yoga, gardening, journaling, but the only thing that helped? She began to lead a Bible study at a woman's maximum security prison. Early in the Bible study, she asked the woman, what do you long for? 
the woman responded with answers like forgiveness, strength, housing, healing. Angela wrote, unlike me, they were able to express complex emotions in community. More and more, I wanted to surround myself with these women. I desperately needed people around me who were willing to be candid about their deepest needs, confusions, and struggles. In the stark, sterile walls of the prison, Angela's faith matured. She was mentored by these women, many who struggled with addiction and suicidal thoughts themselves. Her faith grew and aged. It became joyful, not despite suffering, but within it. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall now know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. As faith matures, it may not become more certain or even more convicted. For example, N.T. Wright uses the words scriptural struggle to describe that a mature relationship with the Bible wrestles towards an understanding of who God is and what God has done in Jesus. Having done so much of this wrestling inside and outside of jail himself, Paul emphasizes to the Thessalonians that a faith rooted in Christ-like qualities is as important as apologetics and answers. Paul is grateful for their characteristics of faith, hope, and love. Najay Gupta writes beautifully that hope is a worldview word, where we see the world through the lens of God's promises. If faith is an embrace of what God has done in the past and the present, hope looks to the future of what God has promised, and love holds it all together. In this way, faith, hope, and love have their own aging and maturing timelines too. We need young faith, middle-aged faith, old faith. Young faith can often be full of curiosity and awe. It's that spark of Christ-like qualities. It's like going on a hike with a young child where we see the forest through their wonder-filled eyes. We need new faith to teach us awe in the gospel message and spark Christ-like change in our lives. Here at Trinity, we welcome children as full participants in worship, not just for their sake, but for ours too. Intergenerational community matters. Back again when I was a teenager, an elderly retired English professor who I had befriended would drop C.S. Lewis books into my family's church mailbox with inscriptions written to me on their front pages. What I am noticing now is that Steve did not give me apologetic mere Christianity. I bought that one myself. Steve gave me literature and adventure in the Chronicles of Narnia and the fantasy stories of C.S. Lewis. Steve knew that I was starving for certainty. However, I think he was more interested in how I felt God's loving and faithful presence in my life. I think he cared that the steady stream of paperback gifts gave me a hope in God that only a wise mentor could offer. As an intergenerational community, we can teach each other, maybe not certainty, but the qualities of faith, hope, and love. We can bring each other through hardship. We can, as Angela Garuth writes, express complex emotions in community. As individuals, we can embrace all parts of us, all life stages where we have been. 
all the pain that we have experienced over our life. As I wrap up today, I'd like to use a practice from our children and worship program here at Trinity. It is the practice of curiosity and wondering. So I wonder, who has embraced you as your faith has matured? I wonder how you are being called to step beyond certainty into the whirling complexity of communal emotions. I wonder who God is growing you to become. I wonder what pain God will help us heal together. In our wondering, may we honor all life stages of faith. May we savor faith, hope, and love, and let them mature in each of us and in our whole faith community. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, Mother God, we praise you for the gift of faith that you've instilled in each of us at different ages, at different times. We ask for your wisdom as we mature in faith, love, and hope, um, and that we'd be present to one another in all life stages. Amen. Now we will sing our song of response, which I don't have with me. <laughs> Perfect, the servant song. you to be seated. Our great prayer of thanksgiving can be found in our melon-colored resource booklets. If this is your first time celebrating communion with us, you may simply follow those around you as we come forward to receive the elements. If you wish to remain in your seat, raise a hand and a server will bring them to you. Most importantly, know that all who seek to follow Jesus are welcome at this meal. Let's begin our great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. 
of all creation in Christ you became embodied in the world to redeem all that you have made send your spirit upon us now that this bread and cup fruits of your earth may be to us the body and blood of Christ at supper with his disciples Jesus took bread gave thanks to you broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, Christ took the cup. And he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Great is the hope of all creation in Christ. The hope of the ends of the earth, our terror and war you will see. will come to marvel and share in your peace. We rejoice, we rejoice, with the earth in abundance we say. This is the bread of life given for us. Let, Let all who hunger, hunger come, come and eat. eat. This is the fruit of the vine poured out for us. Let, Let all who thirst come and drink. These are the gifts of God for, for all, all of creation. creation. Let us come for all things are now ready. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. So we share. Sacrifice as a 
One announcement before we begin our prayer today. Uh, Joy Larrick received the welcome news that she will not need chemotherapy following her surgery. 
Joy's doctor is recommending uh, radiation as a precautionary measure. So I invite you to keep Joy in your prayers as she receives those radiation treatments, continues to heal, and seeks to live cancer-free. Let's go to our God in prayer. God of all generations, we thank you for drawing us together by drawing us to you at this table. Once again, we taste and see that you are good, that your steadfast love endures forever. Thank you for the faith you grow in each of us in each season of life. Help us to embody that faith through our offerings and through our lives. God, hold us together so that we might help each other through. We give thanks that you are with us even in the painful moments of life. As we gather today, we cannot help but think of our siblings who make up all the nations of the world. We pray for our siblings in Israel and Palestine. We ask you to bring comfort for the grieving, hope for the hostages, justice to those who have committed atrocities, deliverance for people oppressed, and a good way forward for this generations-long conflict that remains an open wound. We pray for our siblings in Ukraine and Russia. We ask for a quick and just end to that war. Bring deliverance and bring peace so that Ukrainians can join you in healing their war-torn land. We lament all the lives lost, all the bodies wounded, all the hearts hardened by the horrors of this invasion. We pray for our siblings in the Horn of Africa. We pray for daily bread, water, and the return of regular rains for the millions in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia who are suffering the fallout of droughts and famine. Bring relief from want and protection from the diseases that haunt people when they are displaced. Give relief organizations wisdom to help in ways that alleviate the immediate crisis and nurture long-term flourishing. God, hold us together so that we might help each other through. We pray for our siblings closer to home. Grant Jane and Janice continued healing as they settle back into their homes. Give them all the assistance they need and help them to see the gifts they offer to others. We thank you that Joy won't need chemo, and we ask your blessing on her body as she receives radiation treatments and works for health and healing. We ask you to embrace all our loved ones and sustain them in times of pain and trouble. We pray for those away at college and for those living in nursing homes. We pray for those grinding away at work each day and for those navigating their years of retirement. We pray for those loved ones who carry burdens we don't know how to help lighten. God, hold us together so that we might help each other through. Hold us together so that we might help each other imitate the love and life of Jesus, who's still teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our song of sending is inside our green hymnals, right inside the cover. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing the peace of Christ be with you. Creation 
starts here in between a making of something we've trusted not seen god's spirit sighs over the earth now finding this promise and giving it birth may the peace of Christ be with you, and the peace of Christ I receive it too, the forgiveness of the world is made new, may the peace of Christ always be like home, a cleansing from sorrows, a place to grow strong. May the peace of Christ be with you, and the peace of Christ I receive it too, in forgiveness of the world is made new. May the peace of Christ always be you to raise your hands as a sign of our unity in Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 